Today we have a very special guest on our talk series. Born in 1981 in Manali, Himachal Pradesh, his choice of sport requires him to hurdle down a slippery ice track at great speeds, relying on only reflexes for steering. His personal best is 134 kilometers per hour, and he was the youngest person to ever officially qualify for Olympic Games in the sport of luge. Attending the 1998 Nagano Games as a 16-year-old. He has participated in six Winter Olympics and is the first Indian representative to compete in luge at the Winter Olympic Games. We welcome Mr. Shiva Keshavan. We are extremely excited to have you here. So you've been traveling extensively since 1998. Where are you joining us from today? Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for that uh, introduction. And uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm in Manali, the place where I where I grew up. And um, I'm over here right now, trying to develop uh, some winter sports infrastructure infrastructure in the in the region. Okay, and uh, on Whitehall, we like to explore how people make life choices, and you made very bold and unique ones. So we would like to mm -hmm. learn from all of them. So starting from the beginning, you skied as a child, and even in the nationals, was attending a luge camp in Manali at the age of 14 a happy coincidence? Um, well, yes. Um, what I I feel that um, you know there are always opportunities come up in front of us throughout our lives, all right. Um, and uh, not always are we ready to take on those opportunities. And sometimes we don't even recognize those opportunities, right? Because sometimes we are so um, concentrated and so focused on what we are supposed to do or what uh, let's say this, the society or you know our peers or some some, some extre uh, external uh, you know factors is is, um, is is telling us you know what what we have to how we have to live our life or what we have to be ready for so often we live our life according to that plan which is maybe not even our own plan somebody else's plan and so you're not ready to take up the opportunities that come up spontaneously you know in your in your path um, Whereas uh, for me, I was I was lucky uh, enough that I was able to um, and um, you know able to be ready to take uh, to accept the opportunities that came my way. For example, um, when I was six, when I was fourteen, I was uh, I attended this national luge camp. Okay, I, at that point, I didn't even know what luge is, and now of course I know that it's the fastest sport on ice. It's an Olympic sport, and I've made my whole career on that sport. Um, but at that point of time, I had no idea. But uh, I was ready to accept that opportunity, and and uh, I wanted to explore it. And and I think it makes sense for for all of us. I mean, since we're talking about life choices, um, to explore something that um, you know that interests us. Um, if if there is something that intrigues us, you know, that means that there is some kind of connection with your uh, personality, you know. Uh, there might be, you know, some of the uh, some of the factors, you know, that 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 we connect with, that we find a passion in. And I think that's very important in life. You know, when we're talking about making life choices, um, you know, life choice is a big word because you know you think that okay, I have to make a choice now and then I have to live with this choice for for a long time. Okay. Um, so first of all, I think uh, the life is fluid. All right, we never know what's around the corner. Right now, we're all living in this uh, corona situation, for example. Yeah. None of us could have predicted it, right? But we have to make the best of it. Yeah. Okay, so um, my point, my larger point over here is try to make the best of what you have and um, be in touch with yourself, your inner feelings, your emotions, your passions. And that will help you, you know, to make your life choices and, and, and to be happy with the choices then, uh, then you make. Yeah. So speaking of making choices, you made um, a very important choice at the age of 15 to participate in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So how did, how did it go from attending a beginner's camp at 14 to Olympics at 16? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, of course, uh, attending the Olympics, there's only a certain part of it, which is choice. The rest of it is you have to really work towards it and you have to earn it. So, um, but of course, you first have to decide that you want to take on a challenge and, and only, only then you can commit yourself to it. So I was already a, a very active athlete. I, I did gymnastics, I did athletics, uh, 100 meters, long jump. I, did, uh, I played uh, football for my school. I played hockey for my school. Uh, I was the junior national champion in skiing. So I was uh, generally very uh, 
very well developed you know athletically and um, and when this uh, when this chance came up to uh, to try out luge i discovered that i had a natural talent for it a knack for it and uh, this is where of course providence you know the uh, what you're saying is co- coincidence you know it, it played a part because i i i ended up in this camp in 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 this sport which i happened to have a talent for and i got the opportunity to um to travel abroad on as part of a international federation development program and this was in 1996 okay um so i traveled abroad i um the, the first time i managed to um see the uh, olympic level or the global level of winter sports infrastructure okay because the place where i was born and brought up in manali it is a it's a famous tourist destination a lot of people know it in india but we don't have or at least we did not have any uh, facilities for for sport and even when i had to ski we 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 were we were made to walk up the mountain you know carrying our skis on our shoulders and then you know we we could have maybe two runs a day because there's you can't walk up the mountain more than twice you know you're exhausted by the end of it but when i went abroad i saw all the kind of modern facilities that they are the kind of training you can have and i got really excited by the opportunities that this offered and and also um being part of this international uh, uh, let's say competitive atmosphere okay in which there are people from all over the world and you have to prove that okay i'm better than you all right so it's, it's a competition but at the same time it's um uh, the sports world is very uh, we're very interesting because you make friends with your adversaries all right we're all friends but once we are in the field we compete against each other you know with that respect so Uh, my initial um, idea when i reached over there when i when i was confronted with all these you know international athletes is that i wanted to prove myself i wanted to prove my worth and what better way to prove your worth uh, than you know competing against people who are ranked you know 1 2 and 3 in in the world right so you know exactly what uh, what you're made of and um, and the more i the more i tried and uh, the more i competed i realized that this is not out of reach you know often we see big sports stars on on tv uh, we see people doing incredible feats on tv and we can't connect with it because we don't know where we rank you know compared to such people but what i understood by 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 my travels and by being exposed to proper sports infrastructure is that anyone can do it you just need to try and you just need to practice and i was always a very competitive person so from uh, from then on it it, it took me uh two years to reach uh you know a kind of a level a competitive level that gave me a shot to uh to compete at the olympics and um and by then i wasn't thinking very far ahead i wasn't thinking all right i want to go to the olympics or i wasn't thinking how to win medals internationally i was just thinking about the next day or that i want to be a little better i want to beat these guys who are in front of me and um and it worked you know it, uh, uh, luckily a lot of uh, you know a lot of the stars aligned let's say you know and um, and i managed to qualify for for my olympic games which which in itself was almost like a miracle because um i anything could have gone wrong right especially since we didn't i did not have any support system or anything of that sort so if anything would have gone wrong along the way i wouldn't have made it but uh, you know nothing went wrong and i i managed to get my qualification and i managed to reach the olympic games and that is when i realized that wow you know this is such a huge thing right um this is something much bigger than what i had set out to do right now i'm here i'm representing uh, there were 900 million people in our country at that time so i was representing you know 900 million people as the only one as carrying the flag all the international you know media attention and everything and Uh, that is when you know i started thinking of it more as as a career that i have to be committed to this that that you know this is a long term thing yeah okay and uh, i was watching a video i think documenting your story so mm-hmm. in it you mentioned that you and your friend had handcrafted a sled mm-hmm. so was this supposed to be used in the Olymp- olympics uh, to take you down an icy slope at breakneck speeds it was very interesting because we used to as as kids in in manali that time the the road used to be we used to be completely cut off from the rest of the country during the winter we used to be snowed in uh, and um, so we had to always innovate okay so when we started sledding and when we started skiing uh, it was all self made stuff 
we used to put you know a wooden board and a, you know sit on a wooden board uh, put some uh, you know plastic or, or metal sheet under that and that becomes a sled you know similarly with skis we, we used to innovate and you know with whatever local materials we could uh, we could find handy and uh, and that that taught me a lot and it's you know it's part of this whole indian concept of jugad right you you, you make something you make do with whatever you you can find and um, when i reached um, international level i realized that uh, technology has a huge impact on on how you perform okay you just to give a simple example you think of formula 1 right the car is a lot more important than, than the driver because you, you can be the best driver in the world but if you don't have the, the right vehicle you'll never be able to to do anything so and of course we don't have any uh, technical uh, sled manufacturers in india all right and if i buy something from the other countries they're not selling me the best things they they want to keep it for themselves it's not a commercially available product let's say so so from there we i started also to i i taught myself thanks to uh, thanks to my friend who he was he was a competitor of mine he was a french uh, french athlete and um, you know he took on the role of my of my coach and and we just we started experimenting and and uh, playing with materials like fiberglass carbon fiber kevlar and we started putting together our own equipment you know and uh, it was um, it was incredible because i learned a lot out of it because understanding how the sled is made uh, how it reacts to your uh, you know to the, to the body commands uh, things that maybe some some other athletes even of advanced nations don't know because they they haven't gone through uh, that grind you know they, you you have everything handed down to you yeah so it it helped me in a way uh, but of course you know my own manufact sled manufacturing in my garage is never going to uh, uh, reach the standard of a bmw sled or uh, you know <laughs> something of that sort so so we are, we always had a i always had a handicap in terms of equipment so i was always competing with the you know worse equipment than uh, than, than the top uh, than the top guys but uh, despite that i i was able to come pretty close you know I, by the end of it i was you know, around half a second behind you know the the olympic uh, gold medalist so uh, so that's something that you know would would give me a lot of confidence and i also knew that you know there's this much more in my equipment and if i had access to better equipment i could have uh, done even better yeah. so but it was definitely you know a I, I took it as a positive rather than whining about it that oh i don't have an equipment i don't have this i don't have that take it as an extra learning experience you know because others are not going to get that and today i know more about the sport thanks to this experience right as you said um, having uh, a technology or uh, equipment has a huge impact on how you perform in the sport yes so so a lot of sports people prioritize their equipment first so did you feel uh, confident or did you feel underconfident as a teenager using a handcrafted sled when everyone else came in their fancy sleds um well as a, as a teenager it was more about the looks right you see somebody coming with a good looking sled and you know you feel that wow you know that's something that i would like yeah but um i didn't really have the understanding of what kind of difference it would be to work with a machine like that right and uh, at that time i still had a lot of self improvement to do before looking at the equipment i was still working on myself i was i had to make myself stronger i had to make myself technically you know more proficient i have to get more experience and i started working on all these things uh, when i started exhausting the you know the and and the the higher uh, level you get in 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 competitive sport the closer the margins become all right and um, and the closer the margins become the more difficult it is to uh, you know to make those small incremental improvements yeah. okay and that is when you know I, we went back to the drawing board and we said okay now where is the time going i've got a fast start i've got a good technique i'm i'm strong enough but why am, am i not going to uh, am i not able to go that fast then we started looking at stuff like aerodynamics Uh, sled design materials and of course for whatever that we we could afford given given our uh, our resources we started you know making improvements in that right uh, of course i always um, dreamt of you know 
uh, getting a you know state of the art sled uh, like like the americans had which was you know designed by nasa scientists or like, like the germans had designed by bmw it was always you know kind of a dream but um, but at the same time uh, there's there, there's a time for everything uh, initially it it didn't make much sense to fret over that because i had to improve my own technique once i got to that level then i started looking at this uh, next step yeah in the whole of sports with mega endorsements uh, luge in india still draws uh, quizzical looks mm-hmm. yet you pulled an astonishing feat of participating in so many global events you have single handedly won all the medals india has won in winter sports so what is your motivation and what kept you going um well there's a lot of things in in this i mean of course my my motivation was always my my uh, my passion for the sport and um right when i started i always knew that this is not or this is not yet and probably never going to be a very popular sport so i knew that from the beginning um the reason i joined the sport was very different so i was not looking at uh, you know making a lot of money or being very famous or things like that um although uh, what i also realized during um, you know during my entire career is that if you are consistent at something all right you will get there you will get good at it okay, okay. because the body needs time to uh, to set in into whatever you know zone you are aiming for right and you need to have that patience and you need to have that consistency and i think that is uh, it's like a rule you know it's like a law of physics <laughs> you know if you will that you spend enough time at something and you will get good at it and and th- and that's something i realized and and it's the simple things for example if my if i just run my finger over the 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 edge of the steel i can i can tell what the angle is i can tell how sharp it is i can tell what needs to be done with it whereas for any other lay person you won't be able to make a make out the difference between the steel of one side or the other right yeah so you need that you need that consistency to reach at a certain level and uh, in sport we have a, a concept of um uh, that w- which states that you need to spend at least 10000 hours okay of your life to do something to become proficient at it wow. okay to become an expert at it and this uh, this law it it works across the board you know unless of course you have some uh you know you you're, you're physically or mentally or something incapable of you know a certain activity um apart from that you know it, it is just about putting in the hours and if you put that that amount of hours then you will le- then you will reach uh, a certain level and and it's it's as simple as that basically yeah when you are starting going down the slope and you're rocking yourself back and forth to create momentum and letting yourself go down the slope what do you think and how does your body deal with the g forces okay yeah well that's a very very interesting uh, question because um a lot there's always a lot going on in our minds all right uh, we're dealing with our fears we're dealing with the anxieties we're dealing with the uh, you know what our expectations are maybe we are distracted by something else uh, so a lot of this is always going on in our mind and um, and when you're looking at a high performance sport um, all these distractions uh, take away from your efficiency okay um in a sport like luge which is um, not just a high speed sport but there is a kind of a certain danger associated to it okay the interesting thing that the mind is you know forced to come into the present okay um you just uh, think that you know when you are um you know something dangerous that you have you have done you know or or maybe when you're taking a fall or maybe when you were uh, um Uh, i don't know doing some kind of a risky you know risky activity you will find that your your mind the concentration of your mind it it it, it increases exponentially okay mm-hmm. because there is the subconscious and conscious uh, thought that you know you you can you can have physical harm you know you can get hurt and you don't want that to happen so the the performance the level of performance and the concentration everything increases and um, and that's something very interesting because what happens is 
that uh, because the concentration is so high, uh, the, the time actually stretches, you know, uh, from, from, a, uh, from a viewer's, from, from a spectator's point of view, you know, you're gone in the blink of an eye. But from an athlete's point of view, there's so much you're doing. You know, you're steering, you're anticipating the curve, you're setting up your body in the right position. And the spectator can't fathom how can you do that in such a short amount of time. And that is the concentration. Okay. So all these things, you, uh, you have to train for it. So it doesn't happen automatically. It takes, it takes years of, of practice. And, uh, and you had mentioned initially about instinctively uh, you know, steering the sled. That is true because uh, your your training makes the your reactions instinctive. You know you're you're doing something so many times, you're repeating it so many times, it becomes second nature, and and that is that is what the target is. Because if you have to wait, think, react, by that time the curve is already gone. You know, yeah. so so you really have to be in the moment, and and it really has to become uh, second nature. Um, as far as G-force is concerned, uh, it's also, you know, extremely interesting because uh, it kind of um, uh, confuses your, 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 you know, normal sense of what is up, what is down, because you're, we are going on, on these uh, curves which are past vertical, so over 90 degrees, and we're still, you know, being pushed outwards. Um, and all these things, uh, you know, it, it's not, it's not uh, what we are naturally used to, but we have to train enough for it so that we are comfortable with that and we know how to react you know yeah. uh, specifically for danger situations so we we learn that uh, uh, okay when you're when you have a fall you don't spread your arms out in the air because you know you can break all your uh, limbs right so you compact yourself you roll in a certain way so all these things need to be learned and this is only through through practice yeah and your struggles with the source of uh, sponsorships and government support can be enough to discourage any athlete from entering this sport. And you innovated, but however you innovated and saw solutions where many other people would just give up. So crowdfunding is one of the innovations that you used. Uh, how did this come about? Um, yeah, crowdfunding was extremely interesting because... Um, as you said, I had, uh, especially initially, had a lot of uh, trouble to get funding from the government. Uh, the government was definitely not focusing on winter sports. And uh, in fact, when I had qualified for my first Olympics, the Winter Olympics, the government didn't know that Winter Olympics is at par with Summer Olympics. You know, they, they didn't even have that, uh, that knowledge. And, uh, and so, of course, it was, it, was, uh, it was difficult to come up with funding. But one thing that I always found is that no matter where I was in the world, um, my countrymen and, and women always were passionate about what I'm doing, right? And they were always ready to support. Um, and so when, um, when I was faced with this dilemma that, you know, how am I going to fund my training? One of the ideas was, why don't we reach out to people? Because people have always been supportive. And, um, and thanks to technology and thanks to all these websites, you know, the GoFundMe, Keto uh, in, in India is, is, is a great website that does social causes. Um, there are people who, who care enough to contribute to something, right? Yeah. And um, if there are enough people who do that, then it becomes easier because, you know, each individual can, can donate a small amount and then, you know, overall it can become a big thing. So... Um, uh, especially what I'd done in, in the Sochi Olympics in 2014 is um, I'd, I'd asked, I'd, reached, I'd had this campaign in Keto, I'd asked people to donate to help me, to help me go to the Olympics. And, um, and as a thank you, I made a, I made a suit, an Olympic suit with, with the names of all these people who had, uh, who had, you know, donated. So they felt part of me. And I also felt that I'm taking them down the, the track with me. So there's, there are always innovative ways to, you know, uh, to look for um, solutions. And, you know, this can be, you know, if, if, if you look at it like a, like, like a metaphor, you know, it can be used in any other uh, aspect, you know, any other challenge that you face. Uh, sometimes the, um, the standard practice doesn't work. Like I was supposed to be getting government funding, but that's not happening. So what do you do? Do you give up? Or do you look for an alternative, you know, means? And sometimes that alternative means is, is just around the corner. So it makes sense to, to explore the option. Forces can reach up to five Gs in a bank turns. 
what kind of physical and mental uh, fitness does luge require and can you tell us about finding the sweet spots where you are trying not to steer too much during the turns hmm. um well it's um i think physical is uh, the the physical training part of it is something that is easy okay we can work on and um, often um, you know you, you the way you train your body to do something the mind also gets gets used to it all right uh, so uh, physically you have to you have to undergo a proper you know you, you need to have um, a support system that um, that will give you the to the right tools right of of the trade like just just like you're you're studying for an exam you need your teachers to tell you how to go about it you know otherwise nothing in that book is going to make sense to you um so it's the same for us it's the same for us and uh, you know of course i had to struggle a little bit with that also because we didn't have the kind of coaches that we required at that time but um but but you know we i got there through training uh, the second part is the mental aspect um and the mental aspect is is extremely important okay in whatever you do the physical aspect is often is easy you know because you can you can do it and then once you do it then you can repeat it and you can train for it um and often uh, you know what makes a difference between one athlete and the other or one student and the other is the mental aspect okay are you prepared to go uh, you know that far you know how far are you prepared to go um when you are faced with adversity are you prepared to bounce back uh when you are uh, faced with you know some some serious issues and it comes up in any walk of life not just in sport you will always have problems um no matter what you do right so you have to be um, you have to have that kind of a mental fortitude to to stick to your path or to make whatever decisions you have to right and uh, and so often it is it's the mental aspect that uh, that determines you know a successful person or not because a successful person is the is the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful person is somebody who keeps failing and still doing what he does he or she does right whereas if you quit you will never be successful at it you know so so it's about that it's about learning learning this and it's not easy and uh, which is why it's important to have a good support system people who can who can guide you and uh, and and walk you through this you know and and sometimes just tell you the simple things that that you might know but you don't see it because you're so caught up in this problem in the situation right you need an external person to tell you hey look it's going to be all right you know or just yeah. do do it this way right so um, so it's important to have a support system that you that can give you constant feedback and of course if it's people you trust then is that much more uh, effective uh, luge athletes train all year to shave a few thousands of a second of their time yet in some of your videos you're very calm and mindful with your family picking eggs with your daughter so how do you go from a 50 second adrenaline rush to this calm person picking eggs hmm. um yeah well i <laughs> it's a good question i um you know we um we are defined by uh, you know a number of things in in life okay um often because it's the age of social media and you know information is is so is so uh, easy to come by and, and so short that you don't realize that people have a lot more to them than what you know instant inst- in- instantly uh, is is visible uh first and foremost uh, i'm a i'm a you know i'm a person uh, i am a, you know i'm a husband i'm a father i have uh, you know i've got lots of friends and uh, and and it's important to not to lose sight of all these things you know uh, luge is something that i do but it's not what i am okay yeah. it's part of what i am and uh, and and that was always very important for me because and and i believe everybody should be in touch with uh, with various aspects of their personality all right because you never know in life when one thing suddenly disappears peers okay and and if you reach that stage then it's uh, then it's difficult to cope you know you can have an exist- existential crisis if you define yourself with one thing and then suddenly this thing is not there anymore yeah. so 
uh, I'm gen- I'm generally a very social person, so I um, you know I I live to you know share what I what I do with with friends and with family, and uh, and of course you know once you once you have a family of your own, once you have a daughter, you know some of these equations change. You know the priorities change. Um, so I I think uh, I I always try to involve everybody in what I in what I do, but. Uh, but I also try to segment, you know, various uh, various aspects and various tasks, and and give the give the right amount of time to to each thing, and 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 I also feel that uh, it's important sometimes to um, to take your mind off something, right? For example, if you if you get into, I, I keep on going back to this example of studying because you know you're a student and you think of you you're getting into one subject so much that you lose perspective, you know, and sometimes uh, you just need to take a break. You need to do something else. And then you come back with a refreshed mindset, you know, see things in a different light. So I think that's how, you know, I, I, I see it. Yeah. Right? This is all part of who I am. And, uh, and I, and even in luge, even though it is, it is a adrenaline intensive sport, I, I try to keep calm, you know, and I try to meditate and I try to, you know, use that part of my personality. Yeah, a lot of people sa- uh, lack a sense of directions on careers to follow after college. So, mm-hmm. what advice would you uh, give those people, uh, or what skills do you think would be the most important for those young people to develop? Well, there are a number of skills that I would, um, uh, you know, I I would probably suggest, but um, I think the the first thing is since you're uh, when when you're going from school to college. It is um, it is a moment in which you are thinking about your future, and uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you know whatever you're doing is something that you're truly interested in. Okay, yeah. because it happens so many times that you know you you choose a subject in college because uh, you know at that moment you've not given it much thought or it's been uh, it's been you know put on you that you have to do this. And then by the end of college, you suddenly realize that look, I don't want this. I'm going to change my lifestyle and you've, you've, you've wasted, you've lost, you know, a lot of uh, potential, you know, time to, to prepare to, for, for your goal. So the important thing is to, um, to get in touch with who you are. Okay. To understand that and where you want to go. And second thing is setting goals. All right. Setting ambitious goals for yourself. And um, you need to think big because otherwise you will never go very far. All right. So you need to set long-term ambitious goals for what you want to do. Uh, don't be scared when you're setting goals and don't be scared to, to write it or to, or to say it, you know, this is what I, this is what I want, or this is where I want to be. Um, and then once you have your long-term goal, then you figure out a way how to get there. Okay. Sometimes your goal can be so far away that you can't really visualize it. All right. Sometimes I, I, I give this example that if you want to reach uh, top of a mountain, Everest, you know, it's okay. I want to reach the peak of Everest. You start, but you can't even see the peak. You know, it seems unattainable. Okay. So you break it down. You say, okay, today I'm going to reach here. Tomorrow I'm going to do the next bit. Next day I'm going to reach the base camp. Right. Yeah. So, so you break down your long-term goal into many shorter term, achievable, measurable goals. Okay. So that keeps you focused and, and, and you, you can, you can see your progress. Um, then I think an important thing after that is to manage your time well, okay? Because we, we, young people these days have so much more to do than in the previous generation because everything is so accessible, right? Yeah. So the world is full of distractions. So manage your time well. Keep uh, use the best moments in your uh, in your day to do what you really want to achieve. Keep keep enough time also to uh, you know to. Uh, uh, to do other stuff, you know, just to get your mind off things. That is also important. We are machines, you know, we, we need, uh, we need, you know, to have a well-rounded, let's say, uh, routine. So um, I think, yeah, goal setting, planning, uh, time management, and uh, these are, these are important things. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if, if you are, if you have all these things, you know what you want to do, you have to be able to be in this for the long run, you know, perseverance. I think that is, that is key to a lot of things. And uh, my last question to you is that with all the experiences that you've had so far, what are the guiding life principles that have emerged? Um, 
I think uh, the Olympic Games has taught me um, a lot um, because sport is also, in my mind, not confined to the playing field. Okay, it's a, it's a way of life. All right, um, one of the more one of the most basic, but I think most important things for everybody to realize is to take care of your body. Okay, to be healthy, because when once when you are healthy, you don't think of it; you take it for granted. But if you're not healthy, you can't enjoy even the simple things in life. So you don't want to be in that state. So A, be healthy. And, and that means, you know, being fit, doing physical activity, uh, uh, things like that. Um, the, the second thing I would, uh, you know, I would say is, uh, um, is to... Um, is, is to is to have a passion you know follow follow your dreams and that again gives you uh, gives you satisfaction um, and um, and i think the the bigger thing is to realize the the more the more fundamental aspects you know that that sport teaches us is that we are actually one race you know no matter where you come from um, around the world what color you, your skin may be what god you may worship you know what language you speak etc this doesn't mean anything. We're all the same. We all have the same capabilities, all right? And, what, uh, and so we have to learn to live together and to respect one another and be friends with one another. And um, if, if you respect others, then you also um, react accordingly, you know? Uh, suppose I'm having a match with, uh, with an opponent who I respect. I'm not going to cheat in that match, you yeah. know? I'm going to give the best in myself and that will bring out the best in me and him or, or her. Right. So I think uh, friendship, uh, respect, uh, these, these are the, these are the important things uh, in life. Okay. Yeah. You can win a gold medal, but you know, if you've, if you've won it by cheating five years down the line, you know, it's probably going to catch you and then you'll have to live with that disgrace. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so the simple things. You know, to you, you to know what is right, stand up for what is right, and 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 respect you know your your, your neighbors. You know, I think these are the most important things. If you can live by that, then uh, you know you'll be contributing to a, to a better world. And you know, I think that's where your generation need to take us. Yeah. Okay. So that's all. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking time off to talk with me. I'm sure many people will benefit from this, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure that uh, you'll, you'll all achieve a lot in life. Just, just stick by it and, uh, and you know, be strong and, and, and don't forget to, you know, to, to think big.